Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll look at some input-output options in uh, in PowerShell. Mostly what we'll be looking looking at today will be cosmetic, except for a couple of things. Basically changing pictures, how to grab input from the user, how to display it on the screen, how to display warning, that sort of stuff. So now on my screen, you should already see I've typed in a command. So I'm just saying dollar $input which is a variable and I'm assigning it read host. So read host displays enter your preferences please at the time it's waiting for your input. Right? So I've got a little space here so it gives you a bit of space so that's common sense. And uh, the next is uh, write host which is basically you're, you're displaying the result which I typed it in but I'm doing uh, foreground and background colors here. So let's quickly run and see how this looks. Let's save the file. So asking for preference, I'm going to just say cherries, and there you go, it says you pick cherries, right? So I could change the colors here, instead of black, I could just say green, because green looks good on white, well anything looks good on white. 78, and then it says you picked 78, it's hard to see, uh, but that's what it says, right? I could, I'll make it black, but let's say in your program you want to display some sort of warning so if you want to do that uh, there's a simple uh, commandlet and it's called just write warning so if I run this now it should print that as a warning which is you know the yellow text for warning right now I'm just gonna declare a little variable so we can see how, how to write so I want to write this variable to console so I could say write host and I just want to say dollar number Right, dollar num. That should do it. If I save that and run, it should print. That's perfect. But let's say I want to have a separator, right? I, I could say separator, and I want to separate it with a little arrow like that one and the second one. So now, if I run this, it should have. Well, it won't look pretty, but yeah, it doesn't look pretty, but it's got the it's got the arrow so you could add spaces or commas or whatever you want uh, just here and there you have it looks much much better but I wanna add foreground and background colors so I could do that with background color I wanna say yellow the colors that you can use here are, uh, you can type in any normal color yellow green blue pink white whatever and there's uh, there's a full list of colors I'll try to put the link in the description so and I want to say that's a background so I want to do a foreground color and I want it to display red right I'm just gonna quickly run this see how it looks that's well it doesn't look good but it's all right I could say blue don't know which blue it's gonna use I could probably do dark blue or something you could play around with colors if I'd probably do it the whole day because uh, okay the pink doesn't exist right pink you can't use pink cannot convert value pink to system dot console color that's the class that's being used so let's just make it good old white this I'm sure looks good perfect all right now uh, moving on from here I want to show you a couple of tricks here I have uh, two files test.ps1 which is what we've been running which is the, what you see in the screen here in the, the uh, VS Code screen here uh, test.txt so what I could do you could do invoke command you could do invoke expression there's a I think I'll invoke item which I could just say uh, test.txt and as I press enter it opens the file it's got nothing in there but it, it opens it brings up the file so it goes to your default programs and it opens it with the default program for that type of file right there's uh, another thing I could do get child item right get child item and I, I get this output which is the same as the DIR so let me just extend this so there we go that's the get child item command I typed and it shows two two files which are both zero kilobytes because I don't have anything in, in both the files but now let's say uh, I don't want to type the command straight so if I say dollar command and declare a variable and I want to call it get child item and if I print dollar command okay I did something I okay I didn't put the quotations so I want to make this a string right and now when I print it it just prints get child item right so I'm just taking 
the text and putting it into a variable, right? Now, if I want to evaluate that, so if I print get command, it's printing that, which is cool. But let's say I don't want to print the command. I want to pass that command to PowerShell to evaluate it. So I could do invoke expression, right? Invoke expression, and then I could say dollar command. Now it'll evaluate the file. The other way of doing this is uh, what I did earlier. I could say get service, and I want to assign that to dollar serve command equals. And when I do this, there's not the text that I'm assigning. It's not a string that I'm assigning into this variable. I'm assigning that whole commandlet. If you like this video, please share with your friends. Comment if you'd like to start a conversation. Come on, don't be shy. And hit the subscribe button now.